hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing tonight i am doing great i hope you had an awesome thursday i did um the words for today are uh, moved by the holy spirit so we're going to talk about the holy spirit tonight and so tonight i wore my uh believe in god the father in Christ and in the Holy Spirit. Okay, I didn't want to show y'all my jammies because my jammies do not match my shirt, but it's okay. It's okay. We we have a different fashion trend at home these days. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you about that and um, just the things that the Holy Spirit does for us and um, why we have the Holy Spirit and we're going to look up some scriptures in a little bit but right now we're going to jump into prayer like i said i hope you had an awesome thursday it has been raining here for like three days so i am thinking that god's creation is going to be so much more beautiful when it quits raining all right let's pray god we just come to you and we just thank you god we thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control. And even when things seem impossible, God, all things are possible with you. God, you give us Jesus to offer us salvation. And you give us the Holy Spirit for the guidance that we need, God. We are so thankful that you are uh, three gods in one, perfect in every way. God, we thank you because you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength. You are our refuge, God. You are all these things to us. And God, you are also magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are the righteous judge, God, that will judge all unrighteousness. You cannot be bought. You cannot be threatened. You cannot be compromised unlike some of the judicial systems that we have right now. God, you will, nothing is hidden from you. But God, even though you are that righteous judge, you are still loving and kind and compassionate. You are forgiving, you are faithful, you are patient, God. You keep all your promises and all of your prophecies will be fulfilled, God. We just thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, God. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would soften their hearts, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to see where they are to return to you, to ask for forgiveness, to let you reconcile that relationship and make it as good as new, God. You are right where they left you. They're the ones that strayed away, God. But you are waiting with your loving arms open. God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on. We just pray that you would be with these people, God, that you would meet their needs that you would send people to help them that could be the hands and feet of Jesus for them. God, we just pray for uh, all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And we pray that they would feel your presence, God. And we just, uh, we just praise you, God. We praise you. We thank you for everything that the Holy Spirit does for us, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, first of all, I want to read what I shared on Facebook. And uh, this is a new song. It, I'm telling you what, COVID gave an opportunity for everyone to do a new album. So I'm really having a hard time staying caught up. And they're all good albums, too. They all have awesome songs that really um, reflect some of the things that we're going through. And so this one is called By the Spirit, and it's by Pat Barrett. And uh, 
I just I love this new song and message. Um, I love the lyrics, and and I'm struggling with the decision today, and I'm asking for the Holy Spirit to make it clear for me, and and I think He did today, just off and on. Um, he usually does, but I am torn with this decision. So this was at the time that I was just really torn with it. And so I'm usually very in tune to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to me, but this really has me stumped because I'm getting messages from both sides. You know, usually you just get like a confirmation from God and signs from God. Yes, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm getting like mixed messages. So, God is not the God of confusion, and I know that the Holy Spirit will make it very clear in His perfect timing and His perfect will. I trust fully in Him for the correct answers. I have been moved by the Holy Spirit so many times in my life. I have no doubt that when it is clear, it is clear. We talk about God, Jesus, and very little of the Holy Spirit, but Jesus left us so much information about him. He told his apostles the Holy Spirit will be our comforter, our guidance, our discernment, our conviction, our affirmation of obedience, and so many things that the Holy Spirit does for us when we have been saved through Jesus. The Holy Spirit leads us and also he helps us understand God's word. He makes us, he makes it to where we can understand God's words. And Jesus says that he goes away, but the comforter will come. So the Holy Spirit is our comforter also. Um, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that's in Galatians 5.22. I finally have those memorized. I'm quite proud of myself. Did it with a little kid's song. That's how I got them memorized. It is so hard to keep all fruits going at the same time in this world. But we are to try to do it. The events and things of this world will try to disrupt our fruits of the Spirit if we let it. We must see these disruptions for what they are and who they come from. Our enemy, the father of lies of old, the deceiver of all ages, and especially this one. He's working really hard in this age that we're in, in this church age, this church age dispensation. I, that might not be the right word that I just used. I'm not sure. Okay, if it's not, forgive me, but it is the church age that we are living in right now. Um, okay, the Holy Spirit is a gift through salvation. Are you saved today? If you are not, the Holy Spirit is not residing in you. Because when we get saved through Jesus, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we get that Holy Spirit guide. We get that Holy Spirit uh, connection. We get that Holy Spirit um conviction of sin that's that's why that's why we can't stay in sin for very long because it's very uncomfortable the holy spirit makes it very uncomfortable okay um the holy spirit is part of salvation jesus died for all and all have the opportunity to call upon his name and be saved do not continue to wait call upon his name and be saved to receive the guidance of the holy spirit my daily prayer is for god to allow the holy spirit to draw the lost to jesus for him to soften their hearts, open their eyes and ears to the truth. Now I pray that on here every day. Well, I pray the same thing in the mornings. It might be repetitious, but I think we need to pray for the lost. Um, the Holy Spirit must be the draw to Jesus for people to be saved. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. 
time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3:16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so we, if you are not saved, you really need to consider being saved. Um, time is running out for what they call the free will free will decision of whether you want to accept Jesus as your Savior or not. Because when the Antichrist is in charge, he's going to force people to decide. So go and listen to that song. And this is a new song cafe too. So in the new song cafe, the artists are telling you why they wrote the song. They're telling you the story behind the song, which that is another thing that I love. I love the story behind the song. Okay, so let's move on to some scripture. And so this morning when I was having my quiet time, um, you know, where did I write that? Oh, I wrote it before I did my quiet time. There it is. Okay, so I was listening to this guy talk about the Holy Spirit this morning, and he was giving me all the scriptures that I need for tonight. And I thought, well, that is so cool. So I wrote them down. And then I um, printed off some more. But I think I want to start with John 14, uh, where it talks about the Holy Spirit, where Jesus himself is telling his apostles about the Holy Spirit. And there are so many good things in here in John 14, like, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he is telling them about the Holy Spirit and that he is going to send the Holy Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is. And he calls him the Holy Ghost, but it's the same. It's the Holy Spirit. Okay. So let's read John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Excuse me, I want to put my music in. My other earbuds are not working, but these old ones do. Okay, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that's really loud, that where I am, there ye may be also, and whither I go, ye know the way, and the way ye know. And so Thomas, soon to be doubting Thomas, I don't know whether it's in this book or not, he says, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So if you hear that there are other ways to be saved, God's word says that there is not, and that it is only through Jesus. Have I not, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I skipped. I skipped, I skipped. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, in the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. So now he's talking about the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So once we ask Jesus into our heart, we have this Holy Spirit forever. And we can walk away, but after a while, the Holy Spirit is going to convict us of our sins. So if you have no conviction then maybe, maybe you aren't saved. So maybe you need to make sure that you're saved because we as Christians should have conviction about sin. We should be convicted. Okay. Um, even the Spirit of Truth. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Okay, the world cannot have the Holy Spirit. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him. So if we are part of Jesus, we know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of us. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, and ye shall live also. You know, um, the apostles, they physically saw Jesus. Physically. We have seen pictures, but we have not physically seen Jesus. We don't know whether our pictures that we see are accurate or not, but they physically saw Jesus. So just like we know someone and we physically know what they look like in our heads, they had their memories and their images of the real Jesus that they had walked and talked with. So that's pretty amazing. This I've read this so many times that's never really hit me before. Um, ye see me because I live and ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father and ye in me and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. He that loveth me not keepeth not my saying, and the word which ye hear is not mine but the fathers which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, he calls him the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things 
to your remembrance and whatsoever I have said unto you. So for them, he's going to help them remember all the things that Jesus said to him. Well, see, we have this. This is what Jesus said to us. We have the Bible. We have God's word. But they had, they actually walked and talked with Jesus like he was their friend. He, I mean, he's our friend too, but we can't see him physically. They could see him physically. And he's saying that the Holy Ghost will help them remember what he said and what they did. Uh, peace I, li I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto my Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world, that is the deceiver of old, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. He, him and Jesus, he has nothing in Jesus at all. There is nothing holy in the prince of the world. Do not fall for his lies and deception. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. So, um, <laughs> that's something that I had on my list from last night for youth. It wasn't a song. So the Holy Spirit... When we get saved, we get the Holy Spirit. So let's look up some more scriptures. So the Holy Spirit also brings us remembrance of things that we have learned, apparently. He also utters things that we do not know to utter in prayers to God. I don't know whether this is going to be one of those scriptures or not. Um, we already read that. Let's go read John 16. Was that one of them? No, 14 and 15. Okay, let's read John 16, 13. And it says, let me see. I may want to skip up. Yeah, I do, because it talks about it before then. Okay, these things I have spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them, and these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you, to, for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So in other words, for them, not for us, but for them, Jesus had to go away to send the Comforter. And so he went away and he sent the Comforter for them. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now the Holy Spirit is also the restrainer of evil. And so, if we didn't have the Holy Spirit here on this earth right now, through the Christians that are here, then we haven't seen evil yet. I mean, things are bad. I agree. Things are bad. Things are, there are things that I have never seen before. But, without the Holy Spirit here, and without 
uh, and without the bride of Christ here, it is going to get so much worse. So you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here for the tribulation. I'm telling you, you do not want to be here for the tribulation. It is not going to be good. Okay, let's continue reading. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father. And, and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So don't follow the prince of this world. He is going to be judged. At the end, it is not going to be good for him. So don't follow his lies and deception. I know the younger generations, they don't see the evil that they are buying into. But it's there. And it's blatant. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit to give you that discernment of what is, what is good and what is evil then it's really hard for them to discern what to follow and what not to follow. And I, I see that every day. I see it every day. Um, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is of truth, he is the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So, because of the Holy Spirit as Christians, we can discern truth from lies. We have that ability, not that we are anything, but just because we have the Spirit of truth in us. So we're going to stand on the truth. Christians are going to stand on the truth. That are saved, that are really saved, and really have the Holy Spirit. They're going to stand on the truth. Christians are not going to tell you to lie. We are always going to tell the truth. Because we answer to a higher calling. And that's God. And God says, "For thou shalt not lie. And we're not going to lie. Or if we do lie, we need to ask for forgiveness quickly. Okay. I have yet many things to say unto you. I already read that. Sorry. I will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore say, said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and you shall not see me. And again a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father. So I'm going to see if there's anything more about the Holy Spirit in here. All right, I don't see anything. Okay, let's see what else we can read now. We already read, I read to you Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that's not the King James Version. That's another version that was on that kid song that I... Um, memorize that from. So let's move on to 1 Corinthians 2.10 and see what it says. 1 Corinthians 2.10 about the Holy Spirit. Okay. And, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, 
but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So we have the mind of Christ, and we have that spirit. We have that spirit of truth. We have that spirit that he is teaching us. He is helping us compare things that are, you know, like I said, discerning. What is good? What is bad? What's spiritual? What's not spiritual? What do I follow? What do I do? You know, he is constantly helping us find the way. Find the right way to stay on the path with Jesus. We want to stay on the path with Jesus. We don't want to be on this wide path over here that leads to, to destruction. We want to be on the narrow path over here that leads to God. We want to be on the narrow path with Jesus that leads to God. And the Holy Spirit helps us stay on that path discerning good and bad, discerning what we should do, discerning what we should not do. You know, that is the job of the Holy Spirit. Well, maybe not the job, but that is the attributes of the Holy Spirit. It's not really a job because, you know, it's just not. Okay, so Acts 2.38 Okay, let's look at Acts 2. Let's see. I may want to read this, and I may not. I do like this when... Um, I do like the Pentecost story. I do like that. Let's see. 2.33... Two thirty three, two thirty eight. Okay, well, let's read part of this. Okay, let's start in thirty three, Acts two thirty three. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy, gift, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Sorry, the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this out untoward generation. Then they, then they that gladly received this word, his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So at this time when Peter was preaching this, 3,000 people got saved. And once they got saved, once they accepted Jesus as their Savior, they got baptized and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's see what else we can read here. Okay, 
Okay. I think that's pretty good. I think that's some really good scripture about the Holy Spirit. So when we get saved, we are moved by the Holy Spirit. We are, these men were moved by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has to, um, has to draw people to Jesus for them to be saved. And I'm not sure where that is in the Bible. Maybe I'll look that up and maybe I'll tell you that tomorrow. But I know that's right. I know that it's in the Bible somewhere. All right. Whew. It's hot. So. The Holy Spirit does a whole lot more than I think we give him credit for in our lives as Christians. What is today? The 29th. Okay. So these are my notes from uh, my, my uh, quiet time with God this morning. They aren't very long today. I don't know why. Sometimes I need to like go and teach and do things so that kind of shortens them. So I said, good morning, God. I said, good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share my truth and the gospel of Jesus. A new day, child, that is brand new. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truth and the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for a new day, God. Thank you for all all the blessings I have. I am thankful and grateful. And he said, Child, many things are going on this month and next, getting closer to an appointed to an appointed end. Everything that you see happening is bringing mankind closer to an appointed end by me. Salvation has to be a loud message and repeated too. Many do not receive Jesus because they have been deceived by the world. They are blinded and deaf to the truth, child. I have to soften their hearts, open their eyes and ears spiritually. I need my children sharing my truths and sharing the gospel of Jesus. Child, you need to accept that many of the younger generations will be left behind to find their way in the tribulation back to us. Many will not make it, but get swept away with the evil of the world. I have called you to this generation for a reason. You will not give up on them, and like many already have, um, you will not give up on them like many already have. Keep sharing my truths, child, like never before. Stand firmly on my truths. Share what applies to them. I said, God, I see all of this clearly as a weekly experience. Give me the right words. Lead me, God, in what you need of me. I am willing. Thank you for meeting me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. God, I love you too, child. And I know that you are deciding what to do with the other issue from yesterday. Follow the Holy Spirit's guidance always, child. What is he saying to you? Hearken to what he says. I know you have doubts, but trust fully, child. The guidance and discernment, child. Listen to him. The reunion is soon, child, so be ready. Follow closely to Jesus. Pray for all things and praise in all things. The reunion will be so beautiful, child, like none other, other before. Something that you can only imagine, child. Go be obedient to me, child. Listen to the Holy Spirit, child. He has your answers. And I said, Maranatha, God. All right, so I'm not feeling on the fence some more, uh, so much about this decision. 
but I'm kind of on the fence about how to share the gospel tonight. This is really long. But it's probably really good because it is. Okay, I think I'm going to read this. It's called, Do You Know For Certain That You Have Eternal Life? And that you will go to heaven when you die. I mean, that's this right here. Everyone that's watching this, this is the very most important decision of your life. The very, above education, above everything. Above who you marry, above everything. This is the most important decision of your life. And this is the decision that uh, determines where your eternity is spent. And so it is so important. So let's read it. I think it's going to be really long, but it's okay. God wants you to be sure. The Bible says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. And that is 1 John 5.13. Another question to consider is, suppose you were standing before God right now and he asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What do you think you would say? And this is uh, North American Mission Board, Southern Baptist Church is what this is. I didn't write this. You may not know what you would say, but you can know because God loves you and has a purpose for your life. The Bible states it this way, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 One of my favorite verses. So God's purpose is that we have eternal life. We receive eternal life as a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 We can live a full and meaningful life right now. I have come that they may have life and have it full. John 10.10 10. We will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. We read that tonight, John 14, 3. Um, eternal life gives meaning to life, yet our sinful nature keeps us from fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. Thus, our need is to understand our problem. We are all sinners by nature and by choice. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3:23. We cannot save ourselves. We can, I cannot save you. I cannot save me. No one can save you but Jesus. Not by work so that no one can boast. Jesus is the only one that can save us. And that is Ephesians 2.9. So I'm going to show you this little cartoon here. Oh, it's really hard to get all these clear on here. All right. Yeah, maybe you can see. Okay, so there's man right there. There's sinful man, and there is, what's that called? Self-effort. Trying to get across there on a ladder with holes in it. And then, holy God, we cannot do it. We cannot get across to God. We have to have someone to bridge that for us. So, we deserve death and hell. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. It is true that God is holy and just and must punish sin, yet he loves us and has provided forgiveness for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6. We read that tonight also. The good news is that God has provided for the forgiveness of our sins. So we have the 
We have the little cartoon again, the sinful man, the self-effort with the broken ladder, and the holy God. So God's provision is, excuse me, Jesus Christ. Jesus is God and became man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus died for us on the cross, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 So, I'll show, you the, I'll show you the little cartoon again, but now we've got the cross. We've got the cross bridging the gap instead of the faulty ladder, okay? So Jesus bridges the gap for us. And so Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 <laughs> That is good news, but the only way Jesus can affect our lives is for us to receive him. The Bible says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. The choice is ours, thus our response is to receive Jesus. We must repent of our sin. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Acts three nineteen. Repentance is not just feeling sorry for our sin. They should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Acts 26, 20. Repentance is turning to God through Jesus and away from our sin. It's like making a U-turn. So you're going this way in your sin you turn all the way back around and you go back to God. As we turn, we must place our faith in Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2.8 Faith is not just believing facts about Jesus. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder, and that's in James 2.19. Faith is trusting in Jesus. It's like taking a trip on an airplane. You will never make the trip un until you trust the plane enough to board it. Three important questions. Does what you have been reading make sense to you? Is there one reason you would not be willing to receive God's gift of eternal life? <clears throat> Are you willing to place your faith in Jesus right now and turn from your sin? The Bible says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10.13 You need to ask the Lord Jesus to save you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have so much. Um, hmm. Got a frog in my throat, I guess. Read this prayer and see if it says what you want to say to God. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave a space for this. Uh, so you can repeat this if you would like. If you would like to be saved, it is the most important decision of your life. So dear God, I know that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. <clears throat> I am willing to turn from my sins and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. <coughs> Sorry.
Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so if you said this prayer, and you meant it from your heart, if you believe who Jesus is and that you know that he died for your sins, and you asked for forgiveness, um, welcome to the kingdom family of God. Um, you have just made the most important decision of your life. You can be sure you are saved and have eternal life. As you begin your new journey, because Christianity is a journey and it starts the day that you accept Jesus as your Savior. It is important to realize that Jesus wants you to do more than just reside in your life. He wants to be, than just reside in your life. He wants to be Lord of your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Confessing Jesus as Lord is more than just words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Confessing Jesus as Lord means trusting Him to direct our lives. Trusting Jesus to direct our lives is like driving down the highway with another person. As long as you are driving, you are in charge. If you realize you don't know the way, but the other person does, you might say, take the wheel and drive. Then the other person is in charge, and the two of you take the route he or she chooses. Um, as evidence of confessing Jesus as, Lord, Jesus as Lord, you will want to identify with him. The New Testament way of identification is to confess Jesus publicly. Matthew 10, 32 through 33, and to follow him in baptism in church membership. Acts 2, 41. So your assurance, you know you have eternal life because God keeps his promises. You repented of your sin. You placed your faith in Jesus. God heard your prayer. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. God recorded your commitment. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20. You need to grow as a Christian. The Bible calls new Christians babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. Without certain essentials, babies will not develop normally. The church is a new Christian is to a new Christian what the home and family are to a baby. You identify with your new family by confessing Jesus publicly and by experiencing believers' baptism. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about three thousand were added to their number that day. We read that a while ago. <clears throat> Attend church Sunday and share with the pastor that you want to be baptized and become a member of the church. Praying is to spiritual life what breathing is to physical life. Breathing must be regular and continuous. The Bible says pray continually, 1 Thessalonians 5:17. Learn to be specific in your praying. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. God's word is to a new Christian what good food is to a baby. Good food is a daily requirement for proper growth. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow in your salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2. My best time for daily prayer and Bible reading is, and that is for you to fill in. You know, when is the best time for daily prayer and Bible reading? My, my favorite time is in the morning and then at night when I come and share with y'all. These are my two favorite times. And then I'm not here on Wednesdays because I am at church sharing with the younger generation. 
through music. I do the music, so I try to pick songs that have uh, good lyrics that they can um, they can read if they don't want to sing. They can at least read the good lyrics. And um, I do a small group with our girls, too. So I am trying to plug into the younger generation. I am trying to teach them out of God's Word, not out of not out of my word, but out of God's word, I'm trying to teach them. And, um, okay, the rest of this is just like things that you fill out for yourself if you received Christ. But if you did say this prayer, welcome to the kingdom family of God. Um, your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We read that. And, um, Also, you are safe, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his Son. And so when the rapture comes, and the rapture will come, uh, only God knows when. It will be at his perfect will and his perfect timing. And he will send Jesus to come and get the church. And we will be with Jesus forever. See, that's what he told his apostles. I'm going to prepare a place for you and when I come back you will be with me forever and so we too will be with Jesus forever because we've accepted him as our Savior we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us that helps us with so many things that's what we talked about being moved by the Spirit there have been days that I know this is God's protection through the Holy Spirit that I was getting ready to go somewhere and for some reason or another I just there was something about I've really got a bad feeling about this about going and um, I didn't go I didn't go because I try to stay in tune to what the Holy Spirit is telling me and so I didn't go and I feel like that was God's protection just like my story of when I was going to go to Georgia, you know, and I got sick, and God kept telling me, I'm protecting you. I don't know what God protected me from for that trip. It was going to be my first time to fly. I was terrified, but kind of excited about it, and, uh, but it didn't work out, and it's okay, because of God, that's what God does. He protects us, so he sends us these things. He sends us these thoughts of protection of, well, maybe I don't need to go there today. Anyway, that's how the Holy Spirit works in me. And uh, through my quiet time, God will give me an idea. Or sometimes God wakes me up with words. You know, and I call them my words of the day. And it just seems like everything is building on those words. There's like three to five words. And everything's building on them. And, you know, I really feel like he wanted me to talk about the Holy Spirit. Because everything was building on that. And I'm going through this struggle right now, you know, where I kind of feel torn in both directions. And uh, I want to make sure that I make the correct decision. Because I want to glorify God in my decisions. So, Okay. It is nearly, this has nearly lasted an hour, so I am going to do um, a blessing from God. I was very impressed. I listened to Representative Tim Scott last night. That's really all I wanted to listen to. <clears throat> Not going to any political stuff. Um, because when I listen to a politician, I want their words and their actions to match. And if they don't match, then to me they're not telling the truth. And so I'm just going to leave it there. But I really did enjoy what he had to say. And I loved that he ended it with parts of what I end my thing with, which is God's blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And he, he did much more. May the Lord go before you. May the Lord bless your children and their children. And Because he took it from the song, The Blessing, which I love that song too. But anyway, that is God's blessing for you. He wants the very best for you. Don't settle for less than the best. Don't settle for less than the best. Because God has the best plan and purpose. And you can go your own way. You can go your own way. Every time I say that, I think of the song. But you can go your own way. But you're going to miss out on the blessings of God. Because He wants you to go His way. He wants you to follow Jesus. He wants you to walk in His ways. He wants you to walk in righteousness. He wants you to listen to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is talking to you. So you can go your own way. You can. But there are not going to be any blessings that come with it. And there may be some random blessings, but you're going to miss out on the ultimate blessings, and you're going to miss out on being in God's perfect will instead of just being in his permissive will. And uh, we must be obedient to God. We must be. So i got to leave it there because I'm afraid I might say something that I don't need to say. I try very hard not to talk mostly in generalities because I upload one of these videos to YouTube. And so I have to speak in mostly generalities because I can't speak in specifics. But that's okay. So I know. I know the truth. So it's okay. Because I stand on this truth. This is the truth I stand on. I stand on this truth. So whatever happens, I'm standing on that truth. And I'm not alone. There is an army of people that God is raising up that are only going to speak truth and we far outnumber the ones that do not we just do okay so I'm going to go ahead and pray and so if you come on here then uh, thank you for coming uh, please do Leave a comment if there is a scripture about the Holy Spirit that you like that I didn't cover. Then leave it in the comments. I'd like to go look it up myself. I might want to add it to this. So if I ever talk about the Holy Spirit again, uh, well, I'm sure I will. But whenever I talk about the Holy Spirit again, I would like to add it. I'm putting the putting my title on here on this piece of paper so that I have it I gotta clean my desk off tomorrow I think I'm hiding all the junk from my body but I really need to clean it off okay well let's go ahead and pray God we just thank you we thank you for this time that we can learn your word God that you can um, put your word in our hearts and our minds God of your words of truth about you and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit God we just thank you and we just praise you that you are on your throne and you are in control and God there is nothing that you don't see there is nothing that you don't hear you see all the evil that is going on God that you are patiently waiting for your children to come to the truth, for your children to come to Jesus, for your children to receive the Holy Spirit so that they can be guided, so that they can um, discern, so that they can be comforted, so that they can be led to the truth, just all the things that the Holy Spirit, so that they can walk in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God, you are waiting. You are waiting for that last child of yours to come home. And God, you know every one of us. You know every one of us by name. You know everything about us. You know our hearts, our minds. 
But God, the thing is, is we do not know who your children are and who they are not. And so that is why we have to be bold and share your truth and share your gospel wherever we go. So God, we just pray that you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved, so they can receive the Spirit, and so that they can walk with Jesus, and they can walk in the light, and they can walk in the truth, God. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray that if they've strayed away, they would realize what a wonderful relationship they had with you. And God, that they would return to that relationship. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for my friend Josie. I just pray for her and her family. That you would protect them and provide for them and bless them, God. Just pray for anyone that comes here, God, that you would give them a special blessing. Just from listening to your word, God. Not that I am anything, because I am not. I am just a willing vessel that is willing to share, God. And because I am nothing on my own. So please just uh, help people to see the truth. Help people to be hearkened by the Spirit when they hear your truth in the word, God. And I just pray that you would help us to walk boldly um, forward. And just keep us moving forward with Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, my friends, i got to go feed my child. It is time for me to go. I have really enjoyed um, learning about the Holy Spirit and just realizing, too, that just like we have memories of our friends and families, that these apostles had memories of the time that they spent with Jesus and the things that he said so vividly. Uh, we have God's Word, which is wonderful, but we don't have that up-close personal relationship that they had, which was wonderful, too, for them. But you know what? The exciting thing is, is that one day we will have that up-close personal relationship with Jesus. We will walk with Him physically. Well, we'll all be in a spiritual body. Spiritually, we will walk with Him. We will talk with Him. And we will see the beauty in heaven that we can only imagine. Because I don't believe any of the pictures depict exactly what heaven looks like. It's been described, but I believe it's going to be amazing, and I believe that we are going to be speechless. I do. I believe we'll be speechless. So good night, my friends. My pray and share warriors. Much love. Much love. I think my heart's getting better, or is it getting worse? Much love. Cyber hugs till I see you. Good night.